You've probably ruled out creatine, too masculine, too intense, or just not made with women in mind. I get it, I used to think that too. But research shows it may be one of the most overlooked tools for women's energy, mood, and brain health, especially when paired with taurine. One study even found that taurine can enhance cognition after sleep deprivation, which is, as you know, really common for most moms and especially if you're going through perimenopause. I'm Dr. Yvonne Burkhart, a PhD toxicologist, and I've spent decades studying how everyday chemicals affect our health. And I take creatine daily, not for muscle, but because the science behind it is wildly misunderstood. In this video, we're breaking it all down without the influencer noise, so you can finally decide if creatine and taurine fit with your low tox routine. And one quick thing, my team tells me that over 80% of people watching are not subscribed. So if you've been following this channel for a while, it's definitely worth checking out. Plus it's free and it helps these videos reach more women who need them and genuinely supports the work that we're doing here. I appreciate you so much. You might assume creatine is just for men who lift heavy weights, but what if it played a completely different role in a woman's body, especially after 30? When most people think of creatine, they think of muscle growth or powerlifting, but hardly anyone talks about its impact on mood or hormone balance, even though that's where it does some of its best work. Most women don't realize that creatine supports brain function, mood, and hormone balance. And in fact, it's essential for the production of neurotransmitters like dopamine, and it plays a role in stabilizing mood swings, especially around your cycle. It also helps regulate energy availability in the brain, which is why it can be especially helpful during phases of the cycle where focus and mood naturally dip like the luteal phase. Or the first few weeks of postpartum when energy demands skyrocket but your resources are low. And here's the catch, deficiency is surprisingly common. Plant-based eaters, postpartum women, and anyone who's navigating hormonal shifts, <clears throat> perimenopause, are often low in creatine. That's because we get most of it from animal products and our own production doesn't always keep up with the demand. And in chronic stress, sleep loss, or environmental toxin exposure, these systems get even more strained. Yet when energy and mood dip, we're often told to just try adaptogens, drink more caffeine, use more willpower. Those can all create a temporary spike, but don't give you the long-term support. And if your brain feels like it's running on fumes, creatine could be the missing piece. And it's not just for energy, but also for helping your nervous system and your hormones regulate, repair, and stay resilient even in a demanding season. So what does creatine actually do in your body and why does it matter beyond the gym? We've all heard the gym advice, take creatine and lift heavy. And that's great and it supports muscle power, but for many women, the benefit isn't just about performance, it's actually about sustained energy. Because creatine helps your body produce ATP, which is the energy currency of every single cell. You need ATP for everything. Thinking clearly, digesting food, recovering from a workout, and even regulating your hormones. So basically you need ATP to live. And while it absolutely helps with muscles, it plays an equally critical role in your brain. And that's why low ATP can show up as brain fog, irritability, or that sense that you're constantly drained. I can tell you more often than not, this was how I was feeling before I tackled my diet, my lifestyle, and my supplement routine. Women dealing with stress, like we said, postpartum depletion, hormonal transitions, tend to burn through creatine faster than we can replenish it. And that creates a hidden energy deficit that supplements alone cannot fix unless you fix the underlying problem. When ATP is supported, everything from your mood, your metabolism, it all runs smoother. And creatine is one of the most direct ways that you can fuel that system. But I'm sure you've heard of creatine, but have you actually heard of taurine? The two paired together is where the real magic happens. And if you've ever taken creatine and felt a boost in energy, that's great. But pairing it with taurine can help that energy last longer and feel more stable, especially under stress. The synergy between these two compounds isn't hype. It's actually rooted in how your cells actually work. Taurine improves mitochondrial function, which means your cells can generate energy, ATP, more efficiently. So think of mitochondria as the little engines and creatine fills the tank, taurine fine tunes the engine so it runs smoother, cooler, and lasts longer. It also boosts antioxidant defenses like glutathione and supports fat metabolism, both of which are crucial for hormonal balance and detoxification. This matters because hormones 
don't just rely on balance. They also rely on energy, clearance, and resilience. And the good news is that taurine helps reinforce all three of those things. And this is where it gets really interesting because taurine has been shown to support cognition, neural protection, especially under stress or sleep deprivation, which is usually when your brain suffers the most. And for women in high demand seasons like parenting, high workload, perimenopause, this is huge because it helps to buffer your nervous system when other supports are falling short. Taurine also raises glutathione in animal studies, which is the body's master antioxidant. And these benefits need to be confirmed in humans, but the data are promising. Regardless, it isn't just about having more energy. It's about protecting your brain, clearing toxins, and recovering faster. So together, creatine and taurine help your body to do what it's already trying to do, but better, faster, and with more resilience. And when you support energy at the cellular level, the benefits ripple outward through your hormones, your focus, your mood, and your capacity to handle daily life. And you might be wondering, if creatine is so powerful, is it safe long term? So if you've ever been told that creatine damages your kidneys, you're not alone. That myth has been floating around for years, but it's simply not supported by research. Many women avoid creatine due to fears around steroids, kidney damage, or hormonal disruption. But here's the reality. Your body already makes creatine, so it's not foreign and it's not synthetic to your body. And in healthy people, there is no evidence that creatine harms the liver or kidneys. It's actually one of the most studied supplements in the world, and it has been shown to be safe even with long-term daily use. In actuality, it was found that between only sedentary rats that were given high-dose creatine experienced adverse effects on the liver and kidney, but not in rats that exercise. So basically, exercise is a must, especially if you're taking creatine. Another myth is that creatine causes hair loss, which was based on a study of male rugby players who took 25 grams a day, which is five times more than what's recommended for healthy people. They saw an increase in DHT, which is the hormone linked to hair loss and concluded that creatine causes hair loss. But here's the good news. It's not true if you're taking the right dose. A new randomized controlled trial had men take five grams a day for 12 weeks and saw no significant difference in DHT levels between creatine and placebo groups. And in fact, it's arguably safer than many clean or trendy wellness supplements that have not been tested nearly as rigorously. If you're curious about trying these supplements, what should you actually look for and how much should you take? And you might be wondering whether you need to load on creatine, cycle on and off, or follow some complicated routine. I've got more good news because you don't. You don't have to do any of that, right? So for creatine, you don't need a loading phase. I personally take five grams a day mixed with my coffee or tea in the morning when I have breakfast. And as always, choose third-party tested filler-free products. That's really important because supplements are highly unregulated. And you already know this, but be sure to avoid artificial sweeteners, dyes, or proprietary blends that hide the actual ingredients and are not transparent. So you can skip the hype, skip the loading phase, and skip the pink drinks, and just go for clean, clinically backed doses that your body can actually use. The brand of creatine I use is made by a company called Puri out of Denmark. And this product contains both creatine and taurine, which makes it extremely simple to get the benefits of both in one product. This is the only supplement company that I've seen that rigorously tests every single product for over 200 contaminants of concern and actually shares the test reports. I have visited their labs, I've spoken with their scientists and they check out. So that's why I take this brand. So I'm gonna go ahead and link it in the description with a code for 20% off your first order in case you're interested. Just FYI, I also take their collagen and their whey protein supplements and their vitamin C tablets, uh, fish oil and magnesium. Okay, but what does all of this have to do with detox? Because isn't creatine just a performance supplement? When we think about detox, most of us are probably picturing green juices, sauna sessions, or a whole supplement stack. But actually your body's most powerful detox systems are already inside you, they're internal. And both creatine and taurine support them. They enhance mitochondrial function, right? Increasing the production of ATP, which also helps to raise glutathione, which drives detoxification in the liver and kidneys, and could also defend against everyday toxins like plastics, pollutants, and endocrine disruptors, the things that I talk about on this channel. 
And you might be wondering how does increasing your ATP help to increase glutathione? Well, glutathione is synthesized in a two-step ATP dependent process. So if you don't have enough ATP, you won't have enough glutathione. So for women overwhelmed with all the low tox choices, this duo is science backed, affordable, and it's a good place to start. And if you've ever felt stuck between doing nothing or doing everything, creatine and taurine are that kind of realistic middle ground. It's a small step that supports the systems that protect you every day. So we just saw how creatine and taurine boost cellular energy and glutathione levels to support mood, hormones, and detox. But what if I told you there's one molecule that actually regenerates other antioxidants and it might be the key to slowing down the aging process from the inside out? Well, in this next video, you'll discover the master antioxidant your body is already making, how it protects your brain, balances inflammation, and the exact steps to boost it naturally. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.